Is there a strategy that'll help you grow your company faster? CEO Sales Strategies is an investigative business podcast for entrepreneurial people who never stop asking questions. Highly acclaimed sales revenue growth expert, Doug C. Brown, interviews CEOs, business owners, and professionals who serve them to uncover and share actionable tips and methods behind their bulletproof sales strategies. Topics covered on the show include their failures, struggles, secrets, and processes that help them succeed in selling millions to billions of dollars of their products and services, all with the sole aim of helping you grow your business. If you are eager to know the most effective sales secrets from the A players of the game, then the CEO Sales Strategies podcast is certainly the place to be. Hey, this is Doug C. Brown with the CEO Sales Strategies podcast, bringing you another amazing guest. Her name is Susan Merlo, and she owns a company called the digitaldistributor.com. And we are going to talk today about why info products make sense in a B2B or B2C context for lead generation. In other words, we're going to talk about how you can use info products to actually create more leads, create more rapport with your clients. And she's going to give you a, a pretty simple formula to use that you can start creating info products. Now, before you go, well, wait a minute, that may not be for me. Listen to this episode. You're probably going to find out it's exactly what you need. Remember, we're all going from the old way of selling to the new way of selling. And a lot of people are consuming digital prior to even speaking with a salesperson or an owner or CEO of another company. We're all checking each other out. Like we, I guess we hadn't in the past because we just didn't have access to that. When you're using information products to do this, it starts positioning your expertise, starts positioning you as a trusted uh, entity and somebody that they can respect and uh, get to know. So they'll develop that rapport prior to. So let's go talk to Susan about it right now. Here we go. Hey, Susan, welcome to the CEO Sales Strategies podcast. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Doug. Thanks so much for having me. So we're going to talk about a really cool idea that all companies, uh, I, I've always felt they should embrace. We've embraced it here. You you also believe it uh, based on our previous conversation about creating an info, an info product or an information product and why a business to business company or even a business to consumer company should do so. In other words, how do we use training as a, a lead generation mechanism? And uh, you at the, the digital distributor.com, I mean, you folks do a great job there. So Let's talk about why do companies or why should they, because there's a lot of companies out there that they don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. you know, why should I use an info product or some type of training as a lead generation mechanism? Sure. Well, I mean, there's a few reasons. The, the, the burning reason is what better platform than to feature what you know? You know, there's that. Um, that's kind of like the selfish, the selfish reason. The selfless reason is if you have knowledge, why not share it, especially with people that can use it. So, you know, depending on how you come at it, either way, it's a win-win. It's a win for you and it's a win for your viewers or your buyers or your prospects, you know, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. So let's take any type of company and let's say, okay, uh, I don't know. I'm a I don't know. I'm a medical company, right? Like, how can I use information products to, you know, sell my medical supplies or whatever right. I'm selling at that point? That's a good question. It's funny because I'm I'm speaking at um, an event next month for medical supply distributors. Oh, wow. So um, great tee up. <laughs> um, so if you're a medical supplies supplier. Everyone knows about your products. Products are products. You have masks, you have, you know, uh, tongue depressors, Q-tips, whatever it is. The people that buy them know about the products, but the people that buy them have problems. They have specific sets of problems. Say it's a, let's say it's an urgent care, right? And urgent care buys medical supplies. And as a supplier, you want to sell to them. Well, you can do what everyone else does and tell the uh, tell that prospect how great your products are. But so what? Everyone's products are the same. Rather, you'd be better off 
figuring out what that urgent care needs to improve their business, whether it's a better time management system, um, a better appointment keeping system, um, financial system, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be about the supply. It has to be something that's going to help them with their business. And as a supplier, you know all of this because you're dealing with these people every day. You know, so you can take what another customer did successfully, write about it, a case study maybe about their success, and then put it on your internet for free on your website. And um, what customer wouldn't want that? And that kind of changes the paradigm of how that customer or prospect thinks about you. Now you're not in the selling business. Now you're in the helping business mm. because it's all about helping you know, that person or that business. Yeah, we used to use uh, reports a lot, like free reports mm -hmm. and things like that. And people were like, how are you getting all these clients? And <laughs> the reality is we used to use digital reports and we used to send digital reports out. And the truth be told is they only read about 20% of the reports we sent them. That's right. But the reality was they connected with us over these reports and then we brought them into our main core business into the process and it works great. We do it today the same way. I mean, you know, I know you have a book, it's called the digital distributor. We, you know, we have a book, it's called win-win selling, unlocking the power of profitability by resolving objections. And everybody has challenges with handling objections. Well, not everybody, but the majority of people do. Definitely. So sometimes I'll just send that book out ahead of time, you know, with a couple of, uh, you know, books and, you know, one for the CEO, one for, for somebody else in the organization, just with a little, Hey, I thought this might be helpful to your organization. And, and it's, it's amazing when we give, sometimes we do receive back. So if, if I'm a company and I think, wow, okay, this makes sense, but I, why would my company, I, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a solar company, you know, I, I install solar panels or I'm a painting company, whatever you want to take. Um, and they're listening to this because, you know, we do have solar companies who do listen to this. Sure. Uh, what would they send out? Like, what, I mean, I, would it be a guide on how to reduce your electricity? But isn't that what everybody else is sending? Do I have to be a little different is what I'm asking really on what I'm sending? Well, I, I think that it's safe to say that if you when you have the mindset of being a helping company, as opposed to, oh, I got to get make that next sale. You know, of course you have to make that next sale. Everybody wants to make money, but when you come at it from the customer's point of view, um, there are some exercises that you can do, um, you know, by a buyer persona, you can create your buyer persona or your customer avatar. And the most important thing is to, to know what are they struggling with? What can you help them with? What are the obstacles that you can help them overcome? And I guarantee that 90% of your competition is not doing this. Yeah. So if you can take that extra, let's call it effort, make that extra effort, get into your customer's shoes and um, you know, think of something different, not the price of your product because you don't wanna compete on price. When you partner with your customer, in, in other words, like if you're helping them with their business or if it's a consumer, you're helping them with whatever they're struggling with, you become their partner and you become their trusted advisor. They become, they begin to know you, they begin to like you, and most important, they begin to trust you and they're not going to buy from you until they trust you. Because nobody wants buyers from worse, you know? No, no, no. I mean, they might buy from you if they don't like you. <laughs> but, right and then there's then there's buyer's remorse right but they 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 very rarely if ever will buy when they don't trust you and and you're absolutely right that that's when buyer's remorse sets in the most they go oh geez did i really do the right thing um was this really right for me and then that's when it starts to kick in i have found as well and what people don't understand i think is that we're buying from human beings we're not buying from you know titles of companies Yes. And one day I was calling upon somebody for a telecommunications uh, sale, right? From That's what I did at that time. Um, she was really distraught and she was the decision maker. And 
I asked her, I said, what's going on? And she said, well, I don't really want to talk about it. I said, you really don't want to talk about it. Or you don't want to talk about it with me. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, well, I, I'm going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And I said, geez, that's tough. I said, um, you know, I, I went through one, you know, and, you know, are, are you kind of, you know, are you feeling kind of like this? You know, how, how soon into it are you, you know? And, and so we got talking about it. And the reality is I educated her on what it was like to transition a very bad divorce, right? At that mm -hmm. time in my life, she bought from me. And the reason behind that is because she had a voice to listen to her, to ha her obstacle, her struggle, whatever, and it had nothing to do with her company. But the reality is I educated her on something I knew, just being genuine. And the reason I want to bring that up is because a lot of times people think, and I want to get into this, how do you launch this off? Um, people think that that info product or that information, whatever it might be, has to be directly related to the, the mission of what they sell. Right. And Have you does. found it to be different? Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Um, it's just a matter of building trust. Now, your product may or may not be the solution for that customer, you know, but you you have knowledge that's valuable for that to that customer, some kind of knowledge. If 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 you don't, then that's not your customer, you know, and if the product isn't, you know, say you're running a special on uh, light switches, if you're an electrical distributor. And um, I, I actually, I gave a presentation last week and I used an example. Salesman was selling light switches. We had a superintendent of a bunch of apartment buildings, um, a home electrician, you know, local electrician and, and a commercial contractor that's building office buildings. And the the electrical supplier sent out an email about these light switches. There are about $60 a piece, very high end for homes. You know, it wasn't for office buildings. It wasn't for apartment buildings where people are renting. It was only for homes. So it really, it only applied to that that um, local electrician. So does that mean that they can't help or they shouldn't publish stuff for the superintendent or for the electrical contractor? No, because eventually they're going to come around and there are going to be products for those people. One thing too that I want to just say is because, you know, we're talking about building trust and whether or not they like you. Something else that really plays a part in here is the length of the sales cycle. You know, if you are, like you said about solar panels, if you sell a customer solar panels, chances are you're never going to sell that customer again, but you want referrals, right? So you want to make sure that you're giving them the best service. Um, but that, I mean, that's not knowledge. So maybe I'm going down a rabbit hole, but that knowledge piece is mostly the info piece um, is mostly for longer sales cycles and repeat business if that if that makes sense well i i don't <clears throat> i think you were going down a, a rabbit hole but it i don't think it was the wrong one um <laughs> and, and here's the reason why i believe this i i'm a solar company i sell you're right i mean the sales cycle when are they going to call me back for solar i mean it's not likely to be in a short period of time however if i'm educating them on other things and i make agreements with other providers yeah. then i can use that education to tie in from solar to something else that might make sense. It might be plumbing, for yeah. example, right? Yeah. And I, um, this building we're in now, we recently renovated this and there's only a few people in the whole project that I really trust, right? Out of the, you know, probably dozens of people that came through here. And those people I still go back to for advice. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm looking for a new door for this, this office. Uh, you know, who do you recommend? Why would you recommend it? And they'll they'll educate me on that. They'll say, well, you want an interior door, a soft core door, a hard core door, a solid door. I'm like, what? You know, I, I kind of get the concept, but what's the difference? Oh, sound deadening. How qu how quiet do you want it to be in that office? Mm -hmm. Well, that's going in a recording studio office. So let's, you know, yeah, it so, matters. so they, they make they talk through this with the education. And then they're like, oh, you should go see X, Y, Z. Right. You know what? I'll, 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 I'll hook them up. I just did it with a painter. 
Like I, I you know, and so it was not a huge job, but <clears throat> paying to get $9,000, like, you know, like that. Yeah. I didn't even question it. Right. So it's, it can be used. Now I'm okay. If that other contractor made a deal with a painter to get paid 20% or whatever, I don't, it's, it's not, you know, but it's the education purpose that I trust these people. And so right. I think, I think what you're, where you're going was pretty sound advice because people don't think like this. They don't think like, oh, wait a minute. If I give this referral to someone else, then maybe they're going to start giving referrals back to me. Now, when I run across somebody that needs solar, for example, in that same question, you know, same arena, it's like, go, go to Doug. Doug will take care of you on the cellular, right. I mean, on the solar. And so I think education based on what you're saying can be used for all kinds of purposes, but people don't think outside the box, so to speak on the education. Yeah. And, um, you know, somebody once told me, and I was like, when I was young and, and somebody once told me, Susan, you know, go, go get involved in groups, just go help groups. Yeah. And I was like, what? I'm selling this, right. I'm selling telecommunications at that time. And they said, go, go help groups. So what do I know? I go help a group and in there, they have a cause for battered women. And I'm like, I can get behind that cause, right? So I start okay. working with this whole thing. Well, guess what? I ended up with a half dozen clients out of it because I was working on something because people were asking me questions and I got the chance to help them on other matters, which then they led to say, well, what do you do for a living? So this education yeah. can be, it's the probably the most powerful sale in the world without having to sell. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? You gave a perfect example about the guy with the doors. So you knew to call that guy, but say, you know, your neighbor needs the same information. Well, if that door guy had a little ebook about how to choose the right door, right. put it for free on his website, you know, just download the ebook. If you're interested, you know, he can talk, talk, you know, tell a little story, backstory and someone's, Googling how to choose a door and they land on that that website. They put in their name and their email address. They download the book. The book is helpful. It's good. Now you're in their good graces and you have a new lead. You know, why wouldn't you do that? It doesn't cost anything. Um, one thing I want to throw out there, because I get this objection a lot when not so much anymore, but in the beginning of of my career, when we were telling people to do this, especially well-educated people, they never wanted to give anything away for free. Why right. would I, you know, people have to pay me for this information. Why would I give it to them? But it's, it's, it's worth it. So if anyone's listening, that's thinking, you know, I don't like giving stuff away for free. Well, you know, quash that, try it and, and, and see how it works for you. Because not only that, but when people get that free stuff and they say, wow, this is what they're giving me for free. I can't even imagine how good the paid stuff is. Right. Cause you can also sell them information down the road. So, yeah. So I love this. Give it for free. Jay Abraham, um, who was a kind of a marketing guru, right. Well, well known used to say the same thing, like give it, give it away for free. And people used to be reluctant and it'd be like, give it away for free. And here's, here's part of the reason I know, as I was saying, I think in the beginning, when we gave all these reports away, they only mm -hmm. read one out of five. Oh, it's so <laughs> true. Right? Yeah. So, but they kept seeing our name over and right. over and we were the helpful ones. So, and again, just because you give it away for free, doesn't mean they can do it by themselves. Right. Right. I mean, if you're smart about it, you can actually, I mean, what do we always say? We say, tell people what to do, but don't tell them how to, how do, to it. do it. Right. You know, that's like a little trick, you know, but if they're paying for it, then you're telling them how to do it. You know, if you're, if you, you know, you tell them you have to, um, you know, if you want to be a digital marketer, you have to, you have to build a website. You have to learn how to do email. You have to do this, that, and the other thing. You don't, you tell them all of that, but you don't have to tell them how, but if you want to create a course on how to become a digital marketer and someone's going to pay you $2,000 for that course, sure as heck, you're going to have to tell them how, if you don't, then 
you're not going to sell many courses. <laughs> you know, and, and the reality is in most things, we don't want to do them ourselves anyways. Exactly. You know, we have to all stay in our own lanes if we're running our own businesses. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not interested in rewiring a building. Right. Right. I, I mean, I grew up as a, my dad was an electrician, master electrician. I, I can do it. I'm just not interested in doing it. Right. So in most people, what I find is they're not interested in doing what you specialize in. They're interested in hiring trustworthy, very competent people to take that off their plate so that they can go do something else, which they like to do anyways. Right. That's exactly right. So I, I think you, I wrote something down here and I, I, I was like, if you give it away and you give it away for free and people are thinking, my gosh, you know, this is such good stuff. They are going to want to know what, as you said, what the next level of this whole thing is, right? Mm -hmm. What I wrote down was they can go get it for free on, on YouTube anyways, most of the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell that to my electrician. <laughs> he wasn't too happy when I changed all the light switches in the house and then I had to go in and fix it. So yeah, you know, you can learn to do anything, but who the heck, you know, you gave the perfect example about, you know, wiring. You, you, you can't, you know, and, and not only that, but even, even if you want to do it for free or you want to do it yourself and you, you, you have to have the time, you have to have the resources, you have to have the patience. Yeah. You know, I mean, some stuff you can learn on, on YouTube. I mean, I mean, you can probably learn anything on YouTube, but it's about, you know, do you do this? someone else's job or do you run your own business you can't really usually do both no not no in most cases and that's what keeps companies small in a lot of ways because the the owner themselves or the person themselves thinks i gotta do this by myself oh, the reality is <laughs> strategic and tactical anything that's strategic they should be doing tactical they should be outsourcing if they can right so but what what i want to make a point on youtube was if we're giving the information before they go to YouTube or we're giving the information proactively, we're saving them the hassle of having to go find this stuff. Number one. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and so we're, we're actually becoming a resource, a trusted resource in that regard because we're proactively doing it. And I would, I would have an argument today, Susan, that if we're not proactively doing it, we're actually allowing people to go find it from competitors at that point. Anyways. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. There's nothing that you can publish that's not already published, I think, you know, it's just a matter of if we want to serve our community, serve our customer base, um, we we actually become curators, you know, because all the ideas are kind of out there already and published. But if we, we do it well and we do it, you know, from the heart, right. the right, the right headspace, it works to your advantage. Yeah, a mentor of mine once said to me, he said, there's not a lot of wow thinking out there. <laughs> he's, he's like, there's a lot of good thinking, but yeah. most of the ideas have already been thought of and they're just innovations on those ideas. And <clears throat> I mean, that was like 35 years ago, he said that to me. And I found that to almost be true in most cases, you know, there's the occasional, uh, yeah. you know, one off. But so we're speaking with uh, Susan Merlo. Susan has a company called the, Di the Digital Distributor. You can find it at thedigitaldistributor.com. She has a book called The Digital Distributor. Uh, I want to transition from this into how to. So, I okay, you got me at my interest in this, Susan. Now, how do I go about this? Like, if what are a few steps that I could take in order to maybe transition from point A to point B? Do you mean... In creating an information product? Yeah, or? yeah. I want to create a product now or some type of product. I mean, obviously, I could call you and you can help me out. Uh, I, but, if you're but, a distributor, I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you know, <laughs> in, the, in that space. No, you know what? We learned this from one of my mentors uh, years ago. You know, people say, well, I don't really have any knowledge to share. or I'm not really sure what people want. What you want to do is get out a piece of paper or get on your computer and you want to write down the, the top 10 frequently asked questions that you get. 
And then the top 10 should ask questions that you get. And you answer those questions. And by the time you get through those 20 questions, you have an information product. And maybe you have a book, you know? Hmm. So um, actually there's a book out right now. It's over there somewhere. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I don't want to get up and, and get it, but um, it's, I mean, it's the easiest way to create an information product. The should ask questions, that's like the the juice. That's what's going to hook people. Because like giving, um, let's think of an example. So for instance, so you teach sales strategy. And so uh, maybe a question you get all the time is, hey, Doug, um, how many salespeople should I hire? Right. You know, or what kind of, what should we do with, you know, this? And you're like, well, you know, you should start small and, you know, whatever your advice is. But meanwhile, you're thinking, you shouldn't be asking me about how many salespeople. You should be asking me about what kind of salespeople or what should I look for when I'm hiring a salesperson? That's the question you really should be asking. And isn't that so much more valuable, that information, than, you know, hire three, you know, or, you know, you get into that nitty gritty. So when you get into those should ask questions, that's where the gold is. That's what people really want. And, you know, and you just frame it like in a question or what you think people are searching on. And there you have it. So so I, I, it's <clears throat> so simple to do this, right? I mean, it's so straightforward. So we take one of the, the frequently asked questions and then we put a couple of should ask questions in that, frame that as point number one, then just keep doing it point two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight through 10. And we create that into an information product and voila, there it is. Yes. And if it's good, right, people are going to download it. They're going to look and like, oh, this guy, he really knows his stuff. But how do I do this? They think, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to either go back to your website and look for more information or they're going to see, oh, you have a course, another information product. This one's, you know, $30. They do that. That was worth it. And then they like, oh, I want to do the next step. They go back. And maybe they're hiring you as a consultant or they're taking your, you know, top shelf product if you're selling something for a few thousand dollars or whatever. And it just builds. I mean, that's the business of being, you know, in the business of information products. If you're doing it, which I think most people on your call probably on your, you know, that listen, probably aren't in the information selling business, but they have a business. So you just use it to position yourself as an expert in your field and approachable. You want to make sure that that you're in front of them, that you have their contact information. Of course, that's the best way. That's the best payoff for information products. And, you know, just keep them coming back with good, helpful information. Yeah. And in the old days, we used to call those white papers, right? We used to like, yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the, the challenge with a white paper is a white paper is so long most of the time that it's just so much information coming at them. And so, you know, let's say that I'm a, uh, I'm a manufacturer of whatever. Mm -hmm. The reason I bring this up is I have some manufacturers I know are listening to this. And so if I'm a manufacturer, I could take that white paper and break it down into the 10 frequently asked questions and the 10 yeah. should ask or, you know, 20 should ask questions and supporting questions. And then I can take little bite sized pieces of this, create mini reports or create mini uh, recordings or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, folks, you don't have to be a genius on camera to do this. They don't care. They really don't. As long as That's it's presentable. Fair. And so if you're just feeding them a little bit of information every single day, I, I liken this, Susan, to dating, right? If you come out on the first date with everything you have, you're going to overwhelm the prospect, <laughs> if you will, right? But if you come out and you have a nice first date, even if you just go for a cup of coffee and you spend 25 minutes together and you just like loved one another's conversation, then you're going to want a little bit more and then a little bit more and a little bit more. And then finally, somebody's going to ask the question, hey, can we start dating? Right. That, that, that type of thing. And so information to me needs to come in bite-sized chunks yes. 
that people can take and consume and go, wow, that was pretty good stuff. I wonder what else they have, like you just said, right? Mm -hmm. So for a B2B sales company or a B2C sales company, don't be worried about my messages. Don't be worried about how to create this or what, you know, you just gave them the formula for it. So just follow the formula, break it down into little bite-sized pieces. And you don't have to be that concerned about the quality. I mean, I have people that I know who don't even go on camera. They just use a PowerPoint and they just go through and they still pick up business out of that. So it, it, uh, I think a lot of people, Susan, think that, you know, perfection is perfect Mm. in the info business. Yeah. Yeah. When we're using this as a lead generation mechanism, sometimes the most imperfect stuff's the best stuff. Well, I mean, and your point, your point is right on about people. If it's something long, like a white paper, more than likely people aren't going to read the whole thing. They're going to skim through it. You know, they're going to take out the most important parts. One thing that um, you reminded me of that I should touch on, you know, when you think about those frequent frequently asked questions. Um, It doesn't have to be a full white paper. We try to, um, I always say people love tools, right? They love to have these little worksheets and stuff like that. It could be a checklist. It could be, you know, five things to think about before you go into, oh, I wish I had that. Five things to think about before you go into your next appointment, you know, five things to keep in mind, just little things. And, um, you know, people will, remember you for it and appreciate that you made the effort to make that for them. And it's so easy now, right? We can go on to Canva, right? Which is free. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's templates for all of this stuff. It's so easy. Yeah. There's, there's really not much of an excuse not to do this except eh, I don't want to do this. Right. So that's not an excuse. That's a reality. I, yeah. um, I had a guest on this podcast and he started a software company. All he did was education products out. And he gave a free 30 day trial and um, he went from zero to $2 million uh, within the first 15 months of his business. And he had no advertising budget. He just basically put out free content like this. And so does it work folks? Yes. Right. If you're a $180 million company, does it work for you? Yes. The billion dollar companies? Yes. I mean, they just have more resources to spend on these things, but You know, the reality is when you look at a commercial on television, a lot of times they're educating you on something and that's because they have the budget to be able to do that. But if you don't have that budget, you can still do this in a very cost effective way. Yeah. Um, Susan, I really appreciate you coming on this call. I know you're a business consultant, you're a speaker, you're a sales and marketing strategist, um, and you've got a great book called The Digital Distributor. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, any questions that you were hoping, well, geez, I hope Doug asked this question and he didn't, or did we kind of cover? Let's see. So, well, I serve distributors. If you have manufacturers on your call, they, you know, I would serve them too. Basically what I do is uh, teach distributors and some manufacturers how to get through what they're going through right now, which is a digital transition. Right. right. Last of the uh, face-to-face salespeople are di- distributors and manufacturers. They're having to move to the internet now because of COVID. Um, one thing I could tell you that I think is kind of interesting is, so I told you I sp- I had a speaking engagement last week out in Colorado and my new book is out. We're selling it. It's for $50 a, a, a copy, which is very expensive. I don't I, I don't recommend anyone buying it unless you're a distributor or a manufacturer because that's what it's written for. But what I think is interesting was I gave 200 of them away. You know, that's a lot of books that I could have sold for $50 a piece. Right. You know, but what it cost me to give them away it cost me about $1000, you know, because we get author copies that are a little bit cheaper. But if I get one customer for that, you know, my customers pay me a lot of money. It's worth it. So I would say that if anybody, you know, there's no excuse. Your time, this is time well spent. You know, make this effort. Uh, There's tons of information on the internet about information products. There's a whole, you know, there's a whole uh, roadmap to follow. And uh, you probably 
would be the best person, Doug, to to help people through this because it's about making more sales. That's right. all it's about. Right. You know, helping people is the byproduct. It's good, it feels good, but it's about making more sales. Well, that's well said. <laughs> <laughs> so, Susan, thanks for being here. I really appreciate you being here on the CEO Sales Strategies podcast. Uh, folks, listen to this a couple of times. Get out there and get your info product out there in some capacity. Try it out. You, you're going to be surprised how, how well it can work for you. So, Susan, thanks again for being here. Oh, uh, Thanks for having me. This was so much fun. Okay. Well, what do we learn? Well, we learned it isn't so hard to create info products, number one, right? You just take the 10 top frequently asked questions that are coming out. Take 10 should they be asking type questions and then just create your info product from that. You don't have to make this so complex, right? There's people make it it's like just add complexity into the process and they never get it done. The reality is people are looking for information. Now, they're either going to find it from you. They're going to find it from the general internet, which is going to have your competitors on it. So why not put it in their hands first? Why not be proactive about it? It is an awesome way to stay in contact with one another. Uh, because you're offering something of value. Sometimes that value is not even something that you even do. I've taken people's books who's given me permission to take their book, for example, or their books, and I've actually offered them out to people as a, a method of follow-up contact, right? It has nothing to do specifically with what I'm doing, but if I know they're a parent and it's a great book on you know raising children or something, I'll use that and I'll say, hey, don't know if this is of any interest to you, but I thought it might be. So I was able to, uh, you know, get a copy for you. If you'd like it, let me know. And they respond back. Yeah, I'd love to have it. Right now. What does that have to do with my business of, you know, creating, you know, leverage in your sales? Right. What, what does that have to do with that? Well, really not a lot, except it's pulling them closer to me as a trusted advisor. And the reality is that somewhere, somehow they know somebody, someone knows somebody or they know themselves is looking to be one of those top 1% earners in the world. So in selling, so they will then come back to me. Now, here's the point about info products. Keep them simple. You can create info products and you can do what's called repurposing. So you could take something like, for example, this podcast, we take this podcast, we broadcast it out on YouTube, right? We create transcripts from it. We can create reports from it. We can create mini videos out of this. Uh, there's a lot of content we can create, uh, you know, infographics out of this. All kinds of things can come out of just doing one thing. So keep it simple, you know, and just put it out there. Don't worry about it. Now, what, oh, you know, what if I don't want to be on camera? You don't have to be on camera. But here's the reality. People are going to want to know you. So if you can be on camera, you don't have to be, you know, a polished personality on camera if you want to do that. Just be aware that it's about contact, frequency of contact, providing information as an education. The more you educate your potential buyer or your, your buyer today and you want to regenerate and expand the sale, the more they will come to you before they go to somewhere else. And better off, if they're already with you, you're sheltering them from allowing other competition to come in and take your accounts. So info products are very easy to create. Info products do work. If you're a B2B, I don't, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You can be a manufacturing company. You can be a medical company. You can be a flower shop. You can be you know, a wholesale you know, rose distribution uh, for the whole United States. It really doesn't matter. You can use education. And you can use info products to educate your audience. So highly recommend you do that. Like always, if you love this podcast, please give it a five-star review, share it with other people. The more people we help, we can help uh, you know, grow this and get this out there. A lot of people have come back and said, geez, my God, this subject has been amazing. I love this. Uh, what, have you ever thought about doing a subject on X? So if you have something you want to hear, bring it back. Send an email to you matter, Y O U M A T T E R, uh, at CEO sales strategies.com and let us know what you want to hear. If it's a subject matter that fits the podcast, something that's creating leverage in selling, for example, to CEOs of business owners, uh, something that gives people the optimization side of the business, 
we'll run it. We'll find an expert and we'll do an episode on that and you'll get your answers. Uh, if you think you'd be a good guest, reach out, let us know. Hey, uh, I want to uh, possibly be a guest on the CEO Sales Strategies podcast. Same email address, you matter at ceosalesstrategies.com. If you want to get yourself or someone you know to the top 1% of selling, you want to prospect more, you want to have a systematic process, you want to have leverage in your sales, you want to have leverage in your sales process for your company, if you want help with that, reach out to me at Doug at CEOSalesStrategies.com or Doug Brown123 at LinkedIn. And let me know what you're looking for and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Until next time, go sell something, sell it profitably, sell a lot of it, help people, play win-win. And you'll see by doing so that you will propel your sales forward. Keep listening, keep getting skills, Keep doing the accountability, keep the action going. It just just can't not help but 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 work. It's it's that simple. So until next time, this is Doug C. Brown with the CEO Sales Strategies Podcast, signing off to your success. Thank you for listening to another episode of the CEO Sales Strategies Podcast. What is something that you learned that you could act on today? Don't forget to schedule it now or it may never get forward momentum. If you find our content valuable, please leave a favorable review and let us know what you liked. Please also share this with others if the content will help them. For our show notes, other episodes, and more interesting content and resources, please visit ceosalesstrategiespodcast.com. See you soon and to your continued success.